Oh baby, there we go, a Vayne video and a new Vayne skin. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to dominate on what might be one of the strongest ADCs in the game right now, Vayne. In today's gameplay, I'm going to spoil one thing. After the game, it told me you played better than 100% of Vayne players in the same tier. That's all I'm gonna say. So, you know, I have so much to teach you about Vayne and everything like that. But first, we're gonna be talking about the build. If you wanna skip out to the gameplay, immediately there's timestamps in the description. So, uh, <clears throat> how do you build Vayne? Like, there's, there's multiple misconceptions about building Vayne and everything like that. So, let me teach you everything. First of all, you always start with the Blade of King. You know, this is this is like a no-brainer, just do it. This is always gonna be your starting item. After that, make sure you get at least the basic boots. Now, which boots do you wanna go on vain, right? Like, do you wanna go for Glutinous Greaves, Boots of Swiftness, this, this, this? Which ones are good on vain? Let me tell you. First of all, Mercury Threats are generally gonna be the best. Generally. If you're against like a lot of CC, Vayne really sucks against CC. Like that's basically basically the only thing that can hold back Vayne is two things. I said the only thing, but there's two. CC and burst damage. These are the two things. So if the enemy has a lot of CC, you need to try to eliminate, eliminate it as much as you can with the Mercury threat. So come on, stay down. So if they have CC like a Twisted Fate, especially Twisted Fate, he's a hard counter to Vayne, by the way. You want to get the Mercury threats. Um, plated steel caps are great if the enemy doesn't really have a lot of AP presence. What I mean with that is if they don't really have a lot of magic damage, or should I, I'm gonna rephrase it, they don't have a lot of magic damage that's gonna annoy you as a vein. For example, if they have a Zix, like if they only have a Zix and the rest is full attack damage, Vayne excels against Zix. You can dodge his bombs very easily. So you can actually opt to go for a plated steel caps in that game. So you're gonna be way tankier against those other four champions. And against the Zix, you can dodge out everything anyways. Because Vayne is insanely good against that. Um, Glutinous Greaves are good in the sustain game. If the enemy is like full sustain damage, you can go for the Glutinous Greaves. So um, for the enchantment, by the way, let me tell you about the enchantment. And, uh, ah, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about the enchantment. There's a few that you can go for. First of all, Stasis Enchant. You against a Fizz, you against a Zed, you know, you are against an Akali or something like that. Go for the Stasis Enchant. If the enemy has an insane diving composition and you don't have the tools to escape, go for the Stasis Enchant to survive that initial engage and then you can go again. Proto Belt is really good as well. This is more of an aggressive enchantment. Do you want to have another dash? Because the thing is, Vayne already has enough dashes. The whole point of Protobelt, like if the whole point of going Protobelt on Vayne especially, is to extend your dash. It's not necessarily to have another dash. It's to extend your current dash. So you use your first ability, and right after you use the Protobelt to extend the distance and, you know, surprise the enemy. That's the point of Protobelt, and make sure you do that when you pick it on Vayne. Next is one of my favorites, which is the Quicksilver Enchant. As I said, uh, CC is really annoying against Vayne. QSS, and uh, now I know if you've never gone for QSS before, QSS means Quicksilver Enchant, by the way. If you've never gone for the Quicksilver Enchant before, you really need to get used to it. Because the thing about Quicksilver is, you need to immediately use it when you get stunned or rooted or anything like that to make it worth. Like, if you wait a little bit, the stun is already going to be like halfway done. So, the thing with Quicksilver Enchant is, for example, if Vagar throws down his wall, you can run into the wall and immediately click on the Quicksilver and you're going to escape easily. Second item is generally going to be the Solari Charge Blade. Um, the thing about Withs Ant is, you want to get Withs Ant as your second item if the enemy has a lot of AP damage. If they have an Evelyn, if they have like an annoying mid laner that can dive you, boom, you slap the Withs Ant on your as your second item. Keep in mind, Withs Ant is going to make you uh, give you more sustain, but less damage. So you're trading, off, uh, trading that off. Make sure you get Solaris Charge, but either as your second or your third item, you know, as I said, depending on whether or not you want to go for the Withs Ant. So Solaris Charge is a core item on Vayne. You're, you're constantly going to be proking the Solaris Charge bit because you use your ability so often. Um, and then here we own, we have the only full, like the only full attack damage item that you want to go for on Vayne, which is the Infinity Edge. Vayne only goes for attack speed items because she already has enough damage, but Infinity Edge is totally worth it because it increases your crit damage. 
from 200% to 230%. So that's why you go for the Infinity Edge as your third or fourth item, yet again, depending on whether or not you want to go for the Wits End. Then as your, four, um, as your fourth item, as I said, either Wits End or not, it becomes situational, whatever you need. So um, generally, Phantom Dancer is really good to play a more, uh, it's like a good defensive tool for Vayne. It's It procs the lifeline. When you get under 35% HP, it gives you a pretty big shield. This is just going to be a shield that blocks all damage, attack damage, ability power, everything, right? This is just a really, really good item. Next up, we actually have the Static Shift. This is a very aggressive one. If the enemy is squished, you go for the static shift because then you can actually pretty much one shot them it deals so much damage um, next up we have the Maw of Mormortius a very underrated item if the enemy has heavy AP which they did in last in, in the game that you're about to see in uh, this video you go for the Maw of Mormortius on top of your wrist end and you're literally gonna be unkillable against magic champions um, unless they do like insane magic damage to you you have the Storm Razor as well. I don't really like the Storm Razor on Vayne because uh, it's going to be your only energized item. But you can go for it to catch up to enemies. Thing is, Vayne doesn't really need it. Um, and then next we have the Death Stance. This item is great if the enemy has like a lot of burst heavy champions. You can go for the Death Stance as your last item. You actually do not build any armor penetration on Vayne because you don't need it. Unless the enemy has like three tanks and you're like, whatever, I'll just go for it. And you want to utilize the anti-healing. That's when you can actually go for the mortal reminder. Okay, I think I talked about all the items. Yes. All right, now on to the runes. Conqueror. 95% of the game's Conqueror. If you're new to Vayne, you know, if you've never played Vayne before, you can actually go for Fleet Footwork. This is really good for starting Vayne players because, yeah, it's going to give you more sustain. But Conqueror is the real deal, guys. Second rune, you want to go for Hunt of Vampirism. You know, uh, early game Vayne kind of sucks and it's okay, but the Hunt of Vampirism is really going to accelerate your power throughout the mid and late game. Uh, actually, let me see. So I used to go for Gathering Storm on Vayne, but as I said, Hunter Vampirism just feels way better because of the Vampirism. It's really, really good on Vayne. You can constantly heal up during teamfights. It's just an amazing rune on Vayne. Third rune, Situational. Hunter Titan against CC, you know. This one is going to be the one that you're generally going to be going for, you know, 70% of the games or something. Um, uh, adaptive Carapace is if they don't have a lot of CC. Then you go for this one, you know. It's basically this or that. Fourth rune, Sweet Tooth, because Sweet Tooth is broken. For your spells, you always go for Barrier and Flash. That was it about the build, let's now get into the gameplay. <clears throat> Alright, on to the gameplay. So, before, you know, I'm walking through the lane, let's take a, let's just take a look at this skin, guys. I'm just sitting in my cool motor. Just, just look at how amazing it looks. This is an expensive skin, though. It was like, what, $15 or something? But it's fine, you know, it's for content. Um... I'm also doing a 15 skin giveaway. All you have to do to enter is put down a comment under this video and under some other videos to increase your chances. I'm picking winners in two days. Yes, the new year. And then I'm going to do another giveaway. Also, today, if you're watching this video right now, make sure you join my Discord server because um, I'm going to be casting a tournament. I, I believe it's from India, the tournament, but I'm going to be casting it. You know, the finals of a tournament. So if you want to see that, make sure you join my Discord server. And if you're too late to it, I'm sorry, but again, make sure you join my Discord server so you don't miss these types of things. I have a very active Discord server with, all, with almost 4,000 members. All very nice people, you know, Wild Rift related, so join it. So let me tell you about this game. Oh, I screwed up here, by the way. Let's let's talk about what the hell happened. So Vayne is the best dodger in the early game of abilities. So against a Morgana, you should never have a problem as a Vayne, to be honest. You should never have a problem. Because you can just use your first ability to dodge. Same goes against uh, Blitzcrank. Same goes against Lux. Oh. Oh, what was that? Okay. Interesting. That was that was a bit of a, bit of a weird engage. But yeah, Vayne early game doesn't really do a lot of damage as you can see. You know, even though we literally got ganked. I just did a pretty weird engage. But we, we just can't get a kill. But it's okay. You know, we're against a Jin and a Morgana. Uh, you know what the funny thing is? Alistar was last pick. Oh, look at that backporting animation, though. It looks like she's going back home. But our Alistar was last pick. Enemy had already picked Morgana. I told him, listen, go whatever you're good at. I literally told him this. I told him, go whatever you're good at. But they have a Morgana. Keep in mind. I told him, Nami is really good if you want. And then he said, my Nami is not good. I just told him, pick what you're good at. And then he picks Alistar into Morgana. 
First of all, Alistar sucks against Morgana. Secondly, you're basically playing Vayne on super hard mode if you don't have an enchanter support. When you pick Vayne, it's much better to be playing with a Janna, a Lulu, Soraka, Nami, you know, it's enchanter supports. Braum is also pretty good because Braum's passive, you can be very aggressive with it. But not with Alistar, not with, you know, not, not with these types of champions, not with Lux, not with Leona. It just, it, it, it can work, of course, you know, Alistar can dive turrets. But it just doesn't synergize with Vayne. You're basically playing the lane 1 versus 2 if you have an Alistar. Like, look, what is the Alistar doing? Now, the Alistar was actually a pretty nice guy, so, you know, I'm not gonna talk badly about him or anything, but I'm just looking at it objectively right here. When you pick Vayne, make sure you have an enchanter support to increase your chances massively of winning. Like, imagine Janna giving you a shield before you engage, which gives you bonus attack damage as well. Compare that to an Alistar that's just chilling in your lane. Like, look, look at this. What, like, see, this is, this is just... I cannot do anything. I cannot do anything with an Alistar, so... Play it safe, you know, if you have, an, if you have a support like this, just play it safe and find your opportunities. The thing about Vayne is... You have to find your opportunities in the early and mid game. You know, we all know Vayne becomes insanely broken in the late game. He says ADC, please, man. <laughs> we all know Vayne becomes insanely broken in the late game. But I don't want to talk too much about that up until we reach the late game. Because the more important part is the early game, guys. Because I played a lot of Vayne and I've seen a lot of Vayne. I know a lot about Vayne. And the number one thing that I know is the downfall of Vayne is if you get destroyed in the early game. Okay, if you reach the late game, more often than not, you're just gonna win the game. I'm gonna give you tips on how to and everything like that, but you guys know what I'm saying, right? Vayne is insane in the late game. Also, guys, make sure you give the video a like. You know, it supports the channel and everything like that. Oh, yeah, there it is. First ability and his ult is useless. Just take a look at this. Alistar uses his ultimate. I go in. And I'm also gonna use my ultimate here just to make sure I got kills. Boom, stunner into the wall. Easy kills. Look at that. So... Um, Vayne's ultimate is your all-in tool. You know, you only want to use it when you go all-in. Or, actually, there is one more scenario that you can use it. If you're, as if you're trying to escape from the enemy, you can actually, like, quickly click on your ultimate and then uh, use your first ability. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be invisible for one and a half seconds then. You know, if you use your ultimate and first ability, one and a half seconds of invisibility. So, if you want to escape, you can do it. Not ideal, of course, but... You can do it, but more often than not, the aggressive way. You engage with that ultimate, guys, and make sure you use it before you actually engage with the first ability. Because if you do that, you're going to be invisible. Enemies are not going to see where the hell you are. If you use it after your first ability, you know, it's, it's like a waste. You're literally wasting it. So make sure you use it before your first ability. And the whole, the whole point of Vayne is three basic attacks. You know, we all we all know Jin loves the number four. By the way, there you saw a perfect example of me dodging something. That's basically what you always need to be doing on Vayne. We all know Jin loves the number four. Vayne is more of a number three girl, you know? So you gotta you gotta be utilizing that number. What do I mean with that? You wanna hit enemies three times in a row. You wanna hit the same enemy three times in a row. One, two, three. See that? One, two, three. That's where your damage comes from. One, two. Well, she died even before my third shot. I just got a kill on the Morgana, you know, easy peasy kill. Worth it. Totally worth it. That's what I mean with find your opportunities. I found a Morgana, uh, I found a Morgana, and I used my ultimate. No hesitation. Like, there was no hesitation. You shouldn't hesitate when you play Vayne, yet again, because you have to find your opportunities and make maximum usage of them. As I saw right there, Morgana was isolated, easy kill. Easy kill. Another thing, Vayne accelerates in 1v1s. Vayne is insanely powerful in 1v1s, uh, and that's due to her nature, right? The nature of her kit, which is the three basic attacks. Of course, the three basic attacks only work on one target. So the more people are around, the weaker Vayne becomes. And the reason that I'm doing it like this is because, of course, your teammates can tank for you and everything like that. But what I mean is weaker as in it's going to be harder for you to focus that single target. Because as I said, if you don't do the three basic attacks one after the other, in the early and mid game, you'll deal zero damage. In the late game, you'll still deal damage because Vayne is broken in the late game. But three basic attacks, keep that in mind. You don't want to be switching targets too often. So let's take a look at this. Alistar goes in with a very good engage. Boom, boom. Oh, the Jin actually dodged that very beautifully. But boom, look. Only on the Jin. And now Morgana. Boom, 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 boom. 
Do you see how simple it is? The, the concept is simple, but the execution is a bit harder. Now let's take a look at what I'm doing here. This is also important. Look, 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 look. If you didn't look, make sure you rewind the video because with Vayne, with the first ability, you can actually shoot way faster than normal. And the way that you do that is you roll into a wall. The thing is, when you roll into a wall, you're not going to be dashing super far away. You're going to roll instantly. So what's going to happen is your next basic attack is going to be ready very fast. So if you want to do maximum damage to turrets or, or anything, make sure you put yourself against a wall or against a turret. Just against something to roll against, right? And then roll against the wall. Like, look, I think I'm going to do it here again. Look, look, look. Boom, 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 boom. See how it is? It's instant. It literally is. Look, look, look. Boom, boom, boom. It increases your damage per second massively. Now, you're not going to be utilizing this too much in team fights because you're going to be uh, uh, walking around. But when taking turrets, when farming minions and things like that, you can actually save a few seconds, which can be a win or a loss, right? You can save yourself a few seconds when you attack them through the wall. Now, let me give you some draft advice with Vayne. Pick her against tanks. I like to say that Vayne is the biggest counter against Mundo and Garen. So if the enemy has a Mundo or a Garen, you can pick Vayne. I gotta be a little careful here. Boom, boom. Look, look, look. Okay. Let me tell you what happened here. Let me, let me, let me tell you what happened here. Because I was, I was very surprised here. So the idea that I had, like, let me tell you guys the idea that I had was, I, okay, I have Mercury Strats and I have a, a Hunter Titan. So I have around 45% tenacity. So I'll be able to tank up their roots and stunts, flash over the wall, and then my team is going to wipe them. Because if they all in me, which they did, you know, uh, they're going to lose all of their important abilities. Then my idea was I can flash over the wall and my team is going to kill them. It almost worked, but the CC was just so much. You saw what the hell happened there. Even though I had Mercury Threads and Hunter Titan, I still got destroyed. And... Yeah, in this game, you need a Quicksilver Enchant, you know, against the Morgana, uh, uh, Vagar, and Renekton, and they all have CC. Literally, all of the champions have CC. You have to get a Quicksilver Enchant. Only tenacity is just not enough. Let's take a look at this. Boom, boom, boom. I dodged his root. Look at that. See how easy it is? Here, I'm dead, but I actually got healed, so I rolled out of the turret. Basically, what I was doing there, I was clearing as, much, as many minions as I could, because I was dead anyways. But then the LSR healed me, so... Oops, I disengaged, yeah. What was I talking about? Um, yeah, dodge. Don't just use your first ability. There's a lot of things that you have to think about when you use the first ability. First of all, dodging enemy... One second. First of all, dodging enemy abilities. This is the first thing and the most obvious thing. When a Jin tries to root you, when a Vagar uses his abilities, you know, whenever something happens or Mundo throws his first ability. Let's take a look at this. I go on one target. One, two, three. You can clearly see that I'm constantly just attacking the same targets three times. One, two, three. Another kill. One, two, see that? See that? I'm not switching targets. I'm just almost never switching targets. There, there we go again. See that? Keep in mind though, when you're against a Vagar, you've never won the game, especially this game. That's why I was about to show you guys this game. Because um, Vagar, I believe Vagar can become even stronger than Vayne in the late game. Vagar can one-shot you. That's like, Vagar is a pretty good pick into Vayne, and you'll see in this game why. Uh, he has a lot of stacks already. He has a lot of kills yeah, and assists. I got my Solari Charge Blade though. First, I got the Brawler's Glove, but I undid it, and then I got the attack damage. Because with the Solari Charge Blade, you don't want to you want to prioritize attack damage over crit, because you're already gonna get uh, a lot of crit chance with the Solari. So uh, yeah, first get the attack damage, then get the crit when you get Solari Charge Blade. Let's take a look at this. I'm like I'm waiting for his root to dodge it. That was what I'm do what I was doing. You have to pay constant attention. Oh, I was I was gonna tell you guys how to use the first ability. Sorry. So yeah, to dodge, secondly, to reposition yourself, third of all, to deal more damage, fourth, to cancel your basic attack, and then fifth, when you use your ultimate, to become invisible and not allow the enemy to follow you. You know, enemies will have no idea where the hell you are when you use your ultimate. Boom, boom, another kill. Look at that. 
Bane deals so much damage when you do three basic attacks. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. <clears throat> oh my god, look at that. That Renekton just snatched our Katarina out of nothing. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Look, look, look. Look at what I'm gonna do with the Mundo. Look at that damage. Mundo is supposed to be a tank, guys. Mundo is supposed to be a tank. But he gets destroyed by Vayne. Because the passive of your second ability, uh, on top of it dealing true damage, it also deals true damage equal to like 12% of the enemy's max HP. When you fully upgrade it, you know, at level 1 it's 3%, then 6, then 9, and then 12. At max level, if you hit 3 basic attacks uh, on a row on the enemy, you're going to be dealing 12% of their max HP as bonus damage, true damage. So it's going to go right through everything. So that's a, that's a lot of damage, you know. <laughs> and it also has base through damage, by the way, which they buffed a few months ago. So Vayne is actually really powerful right now. It's just the early game that sucks, and she doesn't have a lot of range. That's also another thing that you have to understand about Vayne. She doesn't have a lot of range. You have to get close up to the enemy, which can put you in a dangerous spot. But that is why you cannot go for like full damage. That's why you're going to be needing items like a Phantom Dancer or Stasis Enchant, Quicksilver Enchant, you know, these types of items. Withs Ant as well to give you magic resist. You really need those types of items when you play Vayne because, as I said, you already have insane damage. I used my Quicksilver to escape her, by the way. Let's take a look. I'm going to make such a big mistake here, by the way. Look, look, just look, look, at, look at what is about to happen. I have double buff, I'm feeling invincible, you know, I'm vain. Look at this. Okay. I guess I get one shot by Vagar. Okay, I mean, sure, why not? I screwed up. I mean, I have nothing to say. I completely screwed up here. I got... Um, as a vein, you never want to do that, of course, you know. I mean, you can get away with, with uh, poking the enemy in the late game. But not against a Vagar. Vagar is going to one-shot you. So, be a little careful, you know, like if it was Mundo, I can do it, because Mundo cannot kill me. But Vagar, no, I can't. It's gonna happen. Ah, yeah, yeah, they got the Baron. I screwed up so badly, actually. That's so dumb. I'm so stupid. Wow. Wow, I really screwed up there. Like, they, they got Baron, now they can push and everything like that. Um, oh, the second ability. This is also a pretty underrated ability of Vayne because, um, you know, people know that it gives you attack speed and lifesteal and everything like that, but how do you use the second ability? So, basically, uh, the way to teach you this is if you think that you can hit three basic attacks on the enemy, use it. You know, if you have enough time to just go on the enemy instead of just poking them, use your second ability and it's gonna allow you to attack faster. It gives you a lot of bonus attack speed, especially because you max the ability first. So when you go on an enemy, immediately use it. Like, look, if I engage this fight, I'm probably immediately gonna use it. Boom, see that? One, two, three. See how fast I can attack like that? I'm using, I'm attacking the same target. Oh, look at that. I just one shot the Morgana right there. How crazy is that? I wanted to kill the Mundo, but he actually flashed away. I would have killed him as well. But you saw that I actually flashed to the Mundo to hit my third attack on him. That's how important it is to hit your th hit that third attack. Because that's your whole damage. Look at it. Yet again, I'm going to go against walls. Oh, I didn't go against the wall. I guess I didn't this time, but yeah. You can save yourself some time when you do that. Uh, I need to take the red buff as well. Yeah, also Vayne with a red buff, like tanks stand no chance. Oh, there he is. Boom, boom, boom. Easy kill. Just like that. Three attacks is all you need. And by the way, I told you guys Vayne can shred through tanks, but Vayne shreds even harder through squishies. You saw how hard I destroyed the Morgana right there, right? I pushed her into the wall and from full HP I killed her with three shots. <laughs> by the way, your third ability is also a basic attack. Keep that in mind. So it procs on hit effects. Yes, the third ability, you know, the bolt that pushes the enemy and it can stun enemies against the wall. It procs on hit effects and um, uh, yeah, so you can also do basic attack, basic attack, third ability. That's also going to proc your passive. And now in this game, I was going to, uh, basically the last item that I'm going for is a phantom dancer. But let's take a look at the enemy team. 
Now I know Phantom Dancer gives a nice shield, right? Phantom Dancer at level 15 gives like a 5-600 HP shield. But let's take a good look at the enemy. Who is really dealing all the damage? Is it Jin? No. Is it gonna be the other attack damage champion? Who is the other attack damage champion? Renekton? No. Is it the Vagar? Yes. So is Phantom Dancer the right item to go? No. In this game, you have to go for the Maw of Marmortius. First of all, because it's gonna give you an insane magic shield. Secondly, when it triggers the lifeline, like when a Vagar tries to one-shot you, you're gonna be saved by the shield from the Maw of Marmortius. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get 30 bonus attack damage and 10 bonus Omni Vamp throughout the entire fight. If you stay fighting, you're gonna get that which is huge against this enemy. So I made a huge mistake by going for a Phantom Dancer in this game. Let's take a look at this. I just want to reach them. I can't reach them too easily. Boom, look at that damage. Boom, 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 boom. I can't reach them. Like they're all running away from me. Basically my team went, um, my team went a little too far. They should have waited for me. And Vayne struggles a little bit with this. If your team goes too fast and you're behind them, you're gonna be useless. It's not like Jinx who can throw a rocket or, you know, Kai'Sa who can engage with her ultimate or Ezreal with his ultimate. Vayne really needs to be close to the enemy to do anything. So, you know, oh, let's take a look at this. Boom, boom, three attacks. One, two, three on the Mundo. One, two, three. There we go. One, two, three. You just count to three. See that? You will kill everyone like that. You will literally kill everyone. Here, there we go on the Jin again. One, two, three. Oh, he actually flashes away. One, two, three. Here, see that? Oh, look at that damage. How crazy is that? I'm literally in their base destroying them. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. I'm full HP already because of my items. We can't really finish. Vagar is actually really strong. I have to be very... See that? See that? He just one-shot me. He literally just one-shot me. I have... I'm full build. He's not even full build yet and he just one-shot me. And here I realized I need to sell the Phantom Dancer and get a Maw of Marmortius. And that was an absolute game changer in this situation. Our Katrina is actually two levels behind. Oh my god. Wow. 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 Alright. She just didn't even take a single damage. Alright. Jesus. That's crazy. <clears throat> oh, I'm gonna be too late with today's video. Rip. It's, I have to upload it after 7 minutes now, but I'm not gonna make it. It's gonna be a few minutes too late. <laughs> Uh-oh, this is not good. It's not looking too good for us. Yeah, I'm telling my team to go for the Elder. We should start it in this situation. Because first of all, we killed our Vagar. Secondly, I can just chase off the Mundo. I can literally just kill the Mundo in like 9 shots. So we can just do the Elder Dragon. Or my team should do it. And I can just chase off the Mundo. Which is exactly what I'm going to do here. As you can see, I'm chasing off the Mundo. See that? 1, 2, 3. I stop his slow. 1, 2, 3. Look at that damage, man. 1, 2, 3 again. See that? Look. Simple. I stun him into the wall and he's he gets destroyed. Look, now I procced the Maw of Marmorsh's passive. Look at how much... How much uh, uh, uh lifesteal i get when i do that the omni vamp and as i said bonus attack damage as well oh look at just take a look at that guys how strong is vein boom 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 and they're just all that i just completely hard carried this game guys imagine if i had an enchanter support it, just imagine so let's take a look at how much damage i did and um what we're about to see here I actually won a lot of games. I'm almost Grandmaster. I won like 8 games in a No, I won like 12 games in a row and I lost only 2 between them. Look at that. Better than 100% of the Vayne players. Sure. I mean, that's good. 56,000 damage. <laughs> Just an absolute amazing game. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.